to open the meeting. Right, okay, let me just tidy my screen up. Um, and find the agenda. Right. Get there in the end. Okay, good evening, everybody, um, and welcome to this evening's P&H. Can anybody, everybody hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, as ever, or as seems to be ever, this is an informal meeting. Everybody should be aware of this. We can't make decisions, but our comments will be uh, acted upon where they can be under delegated powers and otherwise will be ratified or decided at some point in the future. In every other respect, this is a proper meeting which will uh, adhere to the usual rules. Thank you. Um, do we have all the, uh, um, the members of the public here that are wanting to be? I can't see many. There's nobody else in the waiting room chair. Okay, well, let's carry on then. So the, the first item is the public um, uh, discussion. Uh, anybody uh, who has something that they wish to say, could they uh, raise their hands and uh, um, introduce themselves? And they have th three minutes in which to state their case. Um, we need to be fairly strict on that because we've got quite a few items on the agenda. There are two things that I am aware of that need to be referred to, and I think Andy is probably going to refer to one of them. So. You both. OK, I'll, leave. I'm going to put it with Andy's uh, uh, hand first and then we'll take it from there. Andy, it's all yours. OK, thank you. Yes, I've got uh, an email from Charlotte McKay, who's not able to attend. Um, she's raised uh, an issue. It's in connection with item eight and the agenda, the proposal of posters at Abbey School. Uh, she points out that the, um, there's still a huge risk crossing the road from the Abbey School to the church as the mirror that was on the sharp bend was vandalized and still hasn't been replaced and she's asking the question is could this be looked at and could this be considered um for a replacement um i that's that's all she's asked to us uh, asked for a, a report on um the other one is from Bernard Ede, um, who's a, a regular here. We all know Bernard. He is sent his apologies. He cannot attend. He has um, a number of issues he'd like. Um, and there has been a request from Councillor Tippins that this is read out. Uh, and I'm happy to do it on Bernard's behalf. Um, and this is in connection with ITA uh, planning uh, application, which is uh, um, the persimmon one at P uh, item 5.2.6. So, um, Bernard's comments are, there are some significant differences between the approved outline scheme and the current reserve matters scheme. The pattern of developer ruling and DC planners uh, behavior continues and Shaftesbury is being demeaned by it. Um, he, is, uh, um, he is concerned about that and trusts that we take a firm stance this evening, namely one, uh, plot access road and visitor parking intrusion into public open space north and south of the entrance road. This reduces the width of public open space in this already narrow section creates poor entrance image statement. There is no planting just a low five meet point, sorry, half a meter knee rail fence. Secondly, um, there's minimal street tree planting, the dominance of hard surfacing parking and dwelling units. Thirdly, the housing units are built, built directly onto public open space boundaries separated by fences and walls. The outline scheme showed, um, with minor exceptions to north and south, intervening small front gardens with boundary hedges. Um, the stormwater detention basin at the southern end of the site is, is fenced off and therefore inaccessible as POS. Um, the existing hedge and proposed hedges along the C13 specified to be cut maintained to one metre height to maintain views. The public open space characterised by a random collection of trees, these can potentially obscure views. In addition, he raises the point that there's been no environmental sustainability concept nor strategy. For example, no alignment of units for solar gain, no use of shade trees, no low impact development measures or low energy measures, no enlightened sud scheme, just a standard detention basin fed, fed by an underground pipe system. There's no depiction of existing established trees along C13 and the A30. 
The landscape specification curiously states that the amenity grass area is to be turfed. Uh, the choice of tree species around the de detention basin, which he considers to be a wetland character area, um, features exotic maples. Uh, there's no accurate CAD-based perspectives to show impact of development from the A30 and C13, views critical to the entrance and exit of Shaftesbury. Uh, no tree group avenue to signify entrance, no sight line show entrance, no indication of boulevard to north of site, um, uh, no combined segregated footpath cycleway proposal, no lighting details crucial to the town hinterland of the AUNB. Um, and um, uh, that's basically the, the, the uh, total of his comments. Um, I have read it out at the beginning because it's a public um, session uh, and all members of planning have got a copy of that. So we'll have an email there which they can refer to when we get to that item. Uh, John, thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Can I just clarify that all of those points that you've read out as far as Bernie is concerned are departures from the outline or is he suggesting that some of the outline was lacking? Uh, I, I, my reading of it is that it that both things apply. Right. He's talking about significant differences between the approved outlines, outline yeah. scheme and the current reserve matters scheme. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so, they're, they're, those are all documented there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does anybody, any other member of the public, wish to say anything at this stage? I take it that is a no. No indicators this end, Chair. Okay, thank you then for that. Right, so let's move on to the main meeting itself and get down to the first item, which is apologies. Okay, Chair, I have received apologies from Councillor Welch. Unfortunately, he's broken down on the way to this meeting. Um, also, apologies from Councillor Chase, who is uh, currently rehearsing for his performance at the Arts Centre. Uh, and we have one, two, three, four. All other members of the committee are present. And you have Virginia, who's not a committee member, but sitting in with us this evening. Yeah, right, and welcome to Virginia. Okay, um, do we accept the reasons for the apologies? Is everybody happy that we uh, accept them? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Thank you. We accept the apologies. That's fine. Thank you very much. Declarations of interest, if anybody has any that they know of now, can they mention it? And if not, can they mention it if they realise there is one at some point during the meeting? Are we all clear at the moment on that one? Okay, good, thank you. Uh, the next one is the minutes for the 1st of June. Um, has everybody had a, a quick scan of them? And is everybody happy with them? Are there any comments that you want to make? Okay. If not, happy to propose them. Thank you, Andy. I'm second them. Seconded by Jeanne. Thank no, you. No, no further comments on the minutes then. All those in favour of adopting them then, please show. Thank you. All right, so that's that one. All right, that was quite painless. Gets harder from here, though, doesn't it? <laughs> right, um, officer reports. Do you, Claire, do you want to take us through? Um, yes, yeah, so you have actions that arose from the last meeting, just to confirm all the planning application comments were submitted. Um, the um, private and highways engineer for Grosvenor Road. Uh, we've still yet to undertake that piece of work, so we're we're trying to locate the the right sort of engineer who can advise us on that item. Uh, the yellow lines. I have heard back from the grounds team that those have now been done at St James Street. This was the faded lines, um, and the spine road you've got a link hyperlink in your report where you can see the letter that we spent sent in response to the spine road right. uh, motion no further updates to give to you They've not responded to the spine road letter yet then <laughs> no response to the spine road letter chair no <laughs> didn't seriously expect that not yet anyway okay so the, um, that's uh reports to be noted um, that's fine. Move on to the next one, which is the planning applications. And okay, if, if you just hold the button on, I will share the screen. Okay. 
Right, uh, so I will just flick through these items for you. And if you want to come back on any item to show on screen. Okay, so we're talking about a couple of really, what I would say are innocuous signs um, in the building opposite or next to the town hall um, to replace the ones that are there. This is the signs before and the next couple of pictures are going to be the proposed signs afterwards. So um, and Apologies. fade almost into the green sand mm. ground. So, uh, does anybody have any comments on the suitability of those? And Very smart. Yeah, Andy. Uh, yeah, they, they are hand-painted wooden signs replacing the um, signs when, from what, when there was a music shop there. They yeah. are very smart, blend in well. Um, uh, I'm very happy to propose. Okay. Uh, in fact, I propose support. Support, right. Yeah. Okay. Are, you, are you seconding that, Jeanne? Yes, Can yes. Support it. Okay, does anybody else want to say anything more about it? I'm, I'm sold, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, so. I, I would just say that if I were able to vote, I would, in support. Right. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Virginia. Yes, fair enough. You're certainly entitled to comment. <laughs> okay, so if there's no further point to be made, all those in favour of supporting this application, please show. I've lost somebody who's gone off the end. It's yes, I've just yes, I've yeah. I've got Councillor Potter's showing, so that's unanimous, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Now I've lost everybody move. else now. Okay, right. so this is Captain's Foil Hill. Yeah. I'm just rejigging my screen at the moment so I can see everybody at once. Well, can I just um ask Claire a question on this one? Clara. <laughs> okay. I, I, I've I couldn't quite follow what this application was. It looks like two years ago, or 2018, they they had planning permission. Yeah. And if I'm right, are they now asking to amend the planning permission to include a swimming pool? Uh, it wasn't very clear. I couldn't quite work it out. I don't think it's the pool. I think it's a building to service the pool, if I read it correctly. Oh, like a pool house? And the, the I think so. Oh, uh, the... right. Oh, that makes sense then. Yeah, okay. The picture that we're looking at at the moment, um, the sorry, I've the, moved chair. Um, oh, right. Uh, that the one that we Is have that on a, there, chair. No, the you had it. I was looking at it when I was speaking. Um, so it, it's about three back if they're in order. The one that's that it. One, the one, that that's, one. <laughs> uh, There's you, about a two second delay between oh, me moving it and you right. seeing it. <laughs> Oh, it's like that with Netflix when you choose what you want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, if you look at the um, the proposed residential boundary um, the, the, and the building within it, just up a bit and to the left of it is, are three blocks, two of them with uh, lines across and the third one blank. That third one that is blank is the change between the current drawing and the, the original drawing. So it's that that they've changed. And the, the, the variation of con condition is that they want to disregard the drawing that they first submitted and use this instead. Uh, the condition says that the drawing will be a part of the, uh, is non-negotiable effectively. So condition two is saying, saying you can't change it. And what they're saying they'd like to do is to change it. So it's up to us to decide whether that's reasonable or not, whether it's a, an insignificant enough change. I think that is the only affected um, detail, but I don't know whether anybody else has looked at it closer than I have. Bill. Um, yeah. One small point about this is that um, it's actually in Melbourne Can Parish. Um, I've just checked the boundary. And, yes, it's, um, it's, in our, it's in our settlement boundary, but it's in their parish. <laughs> Really? It, it's an anomaly. Oh. Yes, I look because the boundary oh. goes down the road. The, the boundary of the parish goes down the road, so that side is can, but the settlement boundary has a loop around that area to include it, even though it's outside our parish. Now, it doesn't necessarily alter our observations, but you're quite right. I, I noticed that. It's a bit of an iffy area there. <laughs> you're not quite sure which parish you're in. 
I don't think as far as making our observations are concerned, it particularly matters. I, I mean, it's up to... You're correct, Chair. It's, it's quite normal that we would comment on applications that were close to the boundary or potentially sometimes where there has been a visual impact uh, for Shaftesbury or where there are amenity impact as well. So it, it's, it's perfectly acceptable to comment and it was provided to the Town Council for comment as well. So Dorset Council are looking for comments from this council. Now the, the feeling I get, thank you Claire, uh, the feeling that I get looking at this application given where it is, is that they got through with the, this through by the skin of their teeth and condition two is to say for heaven's sake don't expand, expect it to creep at all. Now I don't know whether I'm being particularly negative in interpreting it like that. It looks like a quite large flamboyant building. I, I'm not sure what visibility effect it has but it's in a very um, sensitive part of the, the terrain. It's, it's overlooked by a lot of Shaftesbury. And I, I wouldn't think um, that any variation on their original application would be acceptable, however minor. Uh, I don't know what other people think. Virginia, you've got a comment to make? Um, well, yes, I mean, this is reasonably close to, to, you know, where we live and I do walk past there quite a lot. It's very difficult. You can see very little of the house on the road. On the There's road, quite yeah. high fencing. There's a, um, and particularly where the, um, where you can see that kind of garage to the, to the, to the left of the main house as we look at the plan, um, there's a very high um, uh, entrance gate there and you can, you, all you can see really is the ridge roof of, of that extension. Um, the only way you can see this house from the front is if you walk through the fields where cattle are kept and round the corner of um, the church farm complex. Um, given the size of the house, I can't see how an additional, a small additional pool hut is going to make much difference to, um, and I don't know that anyone would be able to see it actually. You, you um, obviously, I didn't expect to be able to see it from the road, it is well shielded, I'm, I'm just thinking about whether it shows from uh, the hills above. Uh, you're quite you right. can't see it from the hills. Right, yeah. okay. Or, or below or to the west. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's a, in a quite exposed position. Well, it's, it's shielded by church, by the church farm buildings um, from the west. So right. you could really only see it from the south if you walk into, if you walk in, into the top of Foyle Hill, the fields at the top of Foyle Hill, walk past the houses of church farm and then look to the left, then you can see the side right. of it. But you had to see the full frontage of it uh, and albeit that's from a distance, you have to, because I'm quite curious, it's a rather nice design. So I <laughs> walked into the fields and had a good look. Um, so yeah, it is quite difficult to see it. Right, um, so <laughs> it's not your view that it's a, an intrusion into the, the right. landscape. Right. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Are, are members of the public allowed to give a, an ad addendum to that? Sorry. Um, I, yes, I'm quite happy, is that, that's Gillian, is it? Gillian, it's just to say from, the Blackmore Vale and the Hardy Way looking up into the conservation area, the existing new building blocks the view of listed St. James Church, and this would be additional to the um, new buildings that are already there. It's not the problem of the view from the roadside, it's how it's perceived looking up towards Shaftesbury and the, the lower green slopes all across that side, which is the uh, salient point in my view. So you consider that it is an intrusion into the view? Yes. And do you think that this small building makes it worse or is so under the hedge that you won't see it <laughs> because it is under uh, uh, the boundary hedge and, and in the shadow of the building next door. Um, do, you want, do you want to comment Gillian? Can... I, th I, I suspect it won't make much difference the damage has already been done. Yeah okay thank you thank you very much Phil. I'm just going to make the comment that um, this particular little building isn't going to make any difference. It's the main house that's the, the large intrusive uh, form, which is all approved. <clears throat> so I would see no objection. I propose that. You propose it. OK. Do we have any other, um, anybody else wishing to second that? I'll second it. 
Okay, we have a proposal and a second. Does anybody want to say anything else about it before we vote? That's a proposal of no objection, Phil, yes? Okay, so all those in favour of no objection, please show. I'm minus somebody, well, there's myself as well. I, I'll vote no objection. The, the, the intrusion is probably minimal or, or zero. So I will su support that decision. Um, one, two, three. I'm worried that I can, I'm not missing somebody. And it's, oh, it's Jan. It's okay. No, I'd already, yes. I had voted. Yeah, that's okay. It's only that I couldn't see you. I did. Okay. My screen has organised itself in a strip and and oh, it's right. gone okay. off the end. And I'm trying to see how I. Um... Thank you, Chair. I have unanimous votes on that item now. Okay. Right. Let's uh, let's try and find the rest of the crew again. Right. Okay. That's good. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next one then, which is the. Um... Okay. So you have Hames Lane. Uh, on screen. Yeah, let me just find my notes. Yeah. Okay, the that looks like to me a relatively insignificant change at the back of a house, which has just about got the garden to support it. That, that's how it appears to me. I'm assuming it's not a listed building because there'd be some listed building consent going with it. So the uh, to me, it looks quite straightforward. Does anybody want to comment? It's Is it the I, same size as the one they're taking down? It's a bit bigger, I think. The footprint is larger. The Yes, on the drawing that I'm looking at now, they show a rectangular outline at the left-hand end of the main house. And if you look closely, you can see faint pink lines showing a sort of hexagon of the, the conservatory that's there already. So it's maybe a couple of feet deeper, uh, two or three feet wider and square rather than rounded corners. So yes, it's a bigger footprint. Um, the, uh, I've never quite fathomed out how the other two little buildings um, relate to this because th there are buildings there that uh, seem to be on the same curtilage, but we've had applications for those in the past and they seem to be separate. So I don't understand altogether, but the the extension is at the back. It's not going to take light from anybody. It's not going to overlook or interfere with anybody, I don't think. So I can't see that we'd have any reason to object. That's my judgment. Phil? I, I go along with that. I, think, I mean, the door is, or the, uh, the sort of flat roof extension of the first floor is pretty yes, awful. Um, and in fact, the extension looks rather sort of more contemporary. And um, and as you say, it's not going to be visible from the public realm. It doesn't infect anybody, any neighbours. So I think with no objection. You would propose that, would you? Yeah. OK, thank I'll you. Second that. OK, thank you, Jean. Virginia, were you going to say something? Oh, it was just to confirm that I read through the design and access statement and the house itself isn't listed. It's attached to a grade two cottage. So unless they've complained you know is this... I, I i agree for what it's worth but you know i, I think it, it's you're not going to see it other than the neighbors possibly so are you saying that the adjacent half of the semi is listed yes apparently so it's it's one it, it's um, the adjacent house right. which if you look at the top of this plan yeah. third drawing from the left you can just see the edge of a thatch that that cottage is grade two listed apparently oh. right i didn't realize you could list half of a <laughs> Well, it's a separate house, so yeah. you know it's it's it, obviously the, the listing doesn't apply to a terrace yeah. in this instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I've, I've had a quick look as well, John. For for Hames Lane is definitely not listed. Okay, thank you for that. Um, okay, so we have a proposer in the second for no objections. Does anybody want to say anything finally before we vote? Okay, all those in favour of that proposal, then. That looks unanimous to me. That is unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much, all of you. Right. Okay. Um, add single story extension stable yard, Yatemans Lane. Right. Okay. Are you happy with the location or do you want me to zoom in? Um, does anybody need to any indication as to exactly? I don't know where Yatemans Lane is. Yeah. Do you okay. know 
the particular bit of Latham Lane where this house is, because as far as I remember, it used to be the garage of the house opposite. It was a very contentious application oh. because it's a crowded part of um, the of Enmore Green and parking is, is, is tricky. So the um, that, that's in the past that it's all been done and allowed for, but this is uh, trying to extend it a little bit more, increase the size of the footprint. It won't have any other impact on the locality, but it's it's just the fact that it was a tiny building to start with and uh, it needs to be made a bit bigger. But I would hate to think that every few years another application <laughs> came in about a bit more on. Um, it was never going to be big enough for a working house, I don't think, but uh, it got less. Did I see um, a hand raised there? Yes. Yes, John, um, I'm slightly confused because I, I hadn't realised this one had been approved. So they actually built the scheme that had, that it looks like the same thing. So what's the difference between what they applied for planning for and the, what they're now asking for? Can we, just see, see, it, can we see the application proposed? Um, the there, there are better, can I just interject and say that there are better photos of this further on, which I'm sure Claire will show us because... Okay. This is actually, they, they've spent a lot of work on this application. And um, so you can see quite clearly, you need to go further on, I think, because um, they've done a very uh, good mock-up of any... what it'll look like. Okay, those are the only photos that Zoe's downloaded for me. So I can go oh, on okay. to the documents online. Well, and, and there are, there are better photos. Yeah. Can it, if we could just go back to the original, the, the plan drawing of this application and I'll, I'll talk through what I understand to fill first of all. So I'm just about to show the proposed floor plan and section there yeah. or the elevation but you're looking for the well, site plan. Right now the um, the, the, the plan pro that, that, that's the one hold it there for a moment right when you look at this we have the original building which is the, the head of the T. This is a T shape on its side. And the head of the T was the original garage that belonged to the house opposite, as far as I remember it. Uh, they added on the first section sticking out the first part of the T at the time of the first application. And there is now an application to add on the smaller lump at the end. So it's intruding into a pretty tiny garden with a pretty tiny parking space in a pretty narrow lane and it's all getting rather crowded. Now that's my understanding of the history of it and the, the, what's being applied for at the moment. Phil? Can I say that uh, now it's approved, uh, I can't see that that glorified bay window really uh, does anything. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not huge, it's not dominating, um, and I, I can't see that it's doing anything to, uh, you know, they've still got their parking space in front, and uh, so I would say no objection on that. Okay, quite fair enough. The, uh, does, uh, anybody want to second that view? I'll um, second it. That was Andy. Okay, thank you. Virginia, did you want to add to it? Oh, just I, I, they put a lot of effort into this planning application, actually. It's a very detailed design and access statement um, referencing NPPF policies and Shaftesbury neighbourhood plan policies. Um, and it'll look very nice because it's going to look exactly like the existing house, which has been nicely done, doesn't affect parking. It's quite small. Obviously, the extension is quite small, but, you know, I, I, I would support it if I could. Yeah. Right. OK, you, you sound as though you almost have a vested interest. You, you know, a lot. Oh, of no, I'm, I'm, I'm just okay. due, due, doing due diligence, John, so that okay. if I make a comment, I've at least I've at least researched what I'm yeah, talking I'm just, about. No, I have no idea. I know nothing about the okay. history of it or anyone at all, but I was just quite impressed yes. with the effort they've gone to because few people make that much effort Fine. with their applications. <laughs> I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just <laughs> clarifying because we need to be clear about what we you know. Oh, gosh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, sorry. I'm just being over enthusiastic. <laughs> OK, uh, so we have uh, a proposer. Did we get a seconder at this stage? Yeah. We have a Andy. seconder, Chair. Andy's, Andy's seconded. Uh, any further comments on this then? So all those in favour of no objection, one, two, three. And I'm going to object. I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. I think it's trying to pack in too much. So it's three, four, and one. Okay. Again. 
which is still that's rejected. still carried yep thank you okay uh, now the next Let's one is forward. christie's lane okay christie's lane for you erection of a two-story rear end and front veranda Okay, is everybody happy where it is, first of all, before we leave that? It's next door to the, uh, or next door but one to the uh, Royal Chase. And we're looking, oh, right. we're looking at a rear extension, which I don't think is going to impact on anybody, uh, and uh, a front balcony or veranda, which is, will face the road, but I suspect that most of those houses are fairly heavily hedged down at that end. So I doubt whether you will be that much aware of it. So the, the right hand picture there of the front, Sorry. I take it this is where the veranda will be fitting in the corner of the, uh, the, the porch. It'll re presumably replace the porch. And I did have a look the other day, I've forgotten now. Um, and the, the rear is going to be extended outwards into the garden, into a fairly large garden. Uh, and doesn't look to me disproportionate for the building. Anybody else have any comments? Right, it's, you know. uh, You've got Phil indicating as well, Chair. Oh, okay, thank you. Phil's off the end of my screen. I've not got this sorted yet. Okay, Phil, did you have a comment? Yeah, I've, just, I, I've just been looking at the um, audit survey map and Trikan <coughs> is basically due south of the Garden of Le Morna, which right. means that a full two-storey extension, which I believe this is, we'll uh, is going to take quite a bit of shading out of the, the, the part of Le Morna, which is uh, nearest the house. So it will have quite a, an effect. I mean, obviously, we're always aware of you know, overshadowing and so on, but I think potentially it is a, it's a bit too much close to that northern boundary. Right. Now, as we look at the left-hand picture that we've got on the screen there, I'm just trying to visualise, that is facing west, isn't it, roughly? So, so the... Yeah, so, so the house, the house that, that elevation of the house is okay. facing north of east. Oh, yes, it's facing the back, right, okay. Yeah, yeah it's north, yes, okay, I've got it back to front. So I'm trying to work out which side on this photograph is Le Morna? Uh, to the right. To the, okay, so it's just off the the screen then, because I mean th there's there's what looks like about <coughs> at least six feet of, of gap between the house and the boundary fence. So it, it, and, it and to be fair, Le Morne have got their drive on that southerly side, uh, but as I say if a full two high, two story uh, with plus a parapet wall is going to be providing quite considerable overshadowing, particularly in winter. Right, right. Uh, and you think that that is sufficient grounds to object to this? Well, we can certainly say to the planning officer we have concerns over it. Right. Are you saying that you're otherwise OK with it? And as long as they take account of the loss of light, then that we would be behind them. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Or is it I mean, uh, it, the, the principle of the extension doesn't seem to be an issue, I would suggest. And yeah. I, I, can I say that the front veranda uh, will actually improve the appearance. I think the great improvement. So I think we should definitely support that. Right. We can't unfortunately support one, but not the other. So it'll be a decision on the whole application. Um, and if you feel that you can't uh, offer no objection, then we need to vote that we do an objection. Does anybody want to make a proposal on, on um, the application? Councillor no. Hollings has uh, indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, the reading through it, uh, they put the applicants point out that the house on the other side, Amberley, has got a similar extension. Um, so there has been uh, evidence that the planning department have, have been content to pass an application. Um, for an extension and as there's precedent um, and the houses are similar and in a similar sort of a uh, layout I would um, I would I would be content to um, offer no objection 
can I say, I'm just looking at the, the audit survey again, that the Amberley, if, assuming that this is up to date, there's no reason why it should be other than up to date, it is much further from Glebe House uh, and its back garden. So I think there's a slight difference. Right. So, you, you're, you're, Phil, you remain suspicious that it's going to harm the, the, the light of the garden next door. Right. Well, Andrew has proposed no objection. Is that right? Did you did you propose yep. objection, Andrew? Okay. Do we have a seconder for that, first of all? I'll more? second that. Okay. So that's Thank a vote. Um, no objection. Um, okay. So if we does anybody else want to say anything further before we actually go to the vote? So the um, resolution is that we offer no objection. Those of you that support it, put your hands up, please. Right, we have okay. two. Thank you. And I suspect we're going to have two that don't support it because I'm persuaded okay. by Bill. So th those, well, th let's have a um, object, um, a no, first of all. Are you saying a no, Bill? So against the no objection, we've got one at the moment. Chair, how are you voting? I, I am persuaded by the argument and I think I would be inclined to agree with Phil but that makes it a dead heat. So I'm now going to have to decide whether <laughs> I feel so strong. That's fine. Two in favour, two against. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's... if I can just probably interject at this point, Chair, if I remind you that this is an informal meeting where I'm gathering the views of the committee members so that I can put in a response on your behalf because it's not a formal meeting. Um, However, I did ask that meetings were carried out in accordance with standing orders and as close to mirroring a formal council meeting as possible. So you have the option to use a casting vote, and I'll take that into consideration. Um, or if you wanted to reopen the debate, um, that's also open to you. But first question is, do you want to use a, an informal casting vote? No, I, I don't think it's worth forcing through something that, that we're split on. Um, it's, it's, it's not a, a major thing. Um, the, if we can trust the uh, planning officer to make the appropriate decision about light, then, um, then I would let it go through. The only question is, do, do, do we trust them to take that into account? <laughs> Phil sort of wouldn't, and I, I'm not sure where I stand on that one. I, I, I think at this stage we need to let it go now and just uh, say that we couldn't decide. So we, we, we send a... I, I can respond to the planning committee with exactly that, that the committee was split uh, in its opinions on whether to object or not. And the sole reason... The concerns that were raised were light and, yeah. that, they, and that you prefer the planning officers to determine in accordance with the local plan and national planning policy framework and of course our neighbourhood plan. That's probably the most uh, diplomatic way of putting it, yes. Yes, okay. Okay. Do that then and then we've flagged up our concern um, and we've put the ball in their court. Yeah, I'm happy with that and I hope the rest of the committee is. Okay, so that was that one. I'm just writing that down then I'll move your yep. slides on for you. Okay, so the last one here then that we have for you is the 55 dwellings. Big one. So there is our relation. So we've got a, a situation here where a building firm that we don't like wants to build 55 houses in a place that it shouldn't be built upon. They got their outline permission by um, appealing a decision that was made on the basis of normal planning common sense, which is that you don't build outside the settlement area. And they were overruled by the planning inspector, which said that because you've not got enough land to build on, you have to build it where you don't like to build it. So we've got a very unsatisfactory situation, whichever way you look at it. It's a matter of sort of, we've heard Bernie's um, comments on it, which were that there were yards of reasons why this 
planning application doesn't marry up with the original outline. So even though the outline one got through, there's no earthly reason to accept this if it differs in a load of significant reasons. Now, is it, um, does anybody want to steer me on the best way to tackle this? It's not going to be easy. We have to um, fight something that we can't effectively fight or we certainly can't win against, but we can, all we can do is make our voice heard. Phil, was your hand up first? I think it was. Phil first and then Andy. Um, I made my own sort of comments, drafted that my, my thoughts. And when I read Bernie's uh, comments, uh, he did reflect most of the same things. Um, one of the strange things is how the east boundary fence is set away from the hedgerow, uh, just leaving a sort of two metre or even a three metre gap between the garden fence and the hedge, which seems a crazy idea. It's, it's, still in, it's uh, close to the, the hedge at the top, and then halfway down it sort of veers away. The, one of the crucial things that uh, the, uh, the various people who tried to have an influence on the Persimmon scheme we're trying to make the Salisbury Road into a bit of a boulevard coming in. And that's why Persimmon have got some three-storey buildings on that side to try and give it, it's a very wide road, to try and give it a little bit of stature. Now this northeast corner of this site, um, at the moment has got a, uh, a couple of little, little two-storey uh, two small houses. And from the point of view of the townscape, that northeast corner is in fact the first building that you come to. It's a gateway building, as, it's, as we would say as an architect's point of view. And there should really be something rather, um, if you like, reflecting the buildings the other side of the road, so that the two together form a bit of a gateway. One would hope that the quality of the stonework and the proportion of the windows could be somewhat better. I mean, it's, it is the most uh, poorly detailed building um, which I'm afraid is what we have come to expect from Persimmon. Um, but the, that end is where they ought to be putting the affordable housing, the flats, so that they can actually get a building with a bit of character. Um, the, uh, then I would support um, all the points that Bernie has made. And when you look at the plan, you see a nice uh, green area, the site plan that doesn't actually show the, the uh, swale, as it's known as the, the soak away at the end of the site. Um, so that takes up a big chunk of what appears to be outdoor space. Uh, there's no space that's indicated that um, appears to have any children's play areas that I could see. I mean, maybe I've missed it because there's quite a heap of drawings that don't tell you an awful lot. Um, and I don't see why they need to do the swale. They've got green sand underneath. The, the, the water can be run into the ground rock and therefore we can keep the area of the land free as open space for the public. Right, so what would be your way of tackling this, just to object and list all of these reasons? Well, I would propose that, I, I, I can't quite remember, Bernie, he, Bernie makes reference to the boulevard concept, and I would just clarify it, that we, we need that northeast corner, and the, and the buildings along that northeast boundary should reflect something more of the boulevard character, and I can't remember if that was included in the neighbourhood plan, because I think Naval plan has been sort of trying to stop things happening rather than uh, encouraging uh, a particular character being given to that that sort of strip. But it's a it's a location with a wide road that we could do with a little bit more uh, architectural treatment. So you would single that particular corner out for more than average criticism. Yes, uh, but then I would also pick up on uh, the other points that Bernie's made because um, he's he's listed all very thoroughly. Right. So if we take his documents as the start point for our um, comments then, um, and you emphasize the area at the, um, that, that's supposed to sort of be part of the boulevard, but isn't quite um, as, as being unsuitable, and we uh, tack on the appropriate um, policies in the neighborhood plan, which would be invoked by this, um, application. That sounds to me as though where we where we ought to begin. I'm, so, I'm not wanting to take Virginia's thunder because obviously Virginia has a lot to do with the neighbourhood plan. But what I I understand the neighbourhood plan is saying is that you should either be doing something which is Dorset traditional detailing and the like, 
or you should be doing something that's contemporary, that responds to orientation, you know, that thinks about where you're going to put your solar panels, where you're going to, are you going to have windows on the southerly side to let sunlight in? No, this one, the, the back room windows look northeast. I mean, it is an appalling scheme. Um, and I think that, that we, we really do need to pick up the neighbourhood plan points um, that this scheme does not address the neighbourhood plan in the slightest. Um, yeah. and I think, therefore, we should object the strongest terms. The other crucial thing, though, is that half the site is in Melbury Abbas, and therefore we really ought to be pooling our, our thoughts with Melbury Abbas so we have a unified approach. OK, well, I mean, we can certainly we need to make a decision tonight. Uh, we can certainly make sure that Melbury Abbas is aware of what we say and we can listen to what they say. Um, I don't know, Claire, can I ask what the, the deadline is for, for comments on this? Uh, let me just quickly see if it's been saved onto the files because I'm going to run out of screen space if I'm not careful. Um, we'll have to check for you, just see if I can grab it. In fact, if you don't mind, I'll stop sharing screen. I'll see if I can pull it up for you. Hold on. Nearly there. I'm sorry, Chair, I cannot find the date on their front page at the moment, and it's taking a very long time to well, scroll through we documents. We must have a few days in which case... The, the neighbour expiry is the 20th of July, and there are yes. occasions when we have a different date, but if you take the 20th of July, uh, I think that would be a fair deadline to work to. I'm, I'm just looking it up now, actually. I think I've got it up on screen. Um, Shaftesbury Town Council. We have till the 20th of July. Right, we've got a fortnight. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so we, we can make sure that the um, Melbury Abbas see the minutes of this meeting with our uh, decision in it. Um, that, that's as much as we can do this evening. Um, it's, it is up to them to decide as well. Um, right. So the what, what I've really only heard in, in extent from Phil at the moment, does anybody else want some <coughs> observations? Andy? Yeah, yeah, please. Thank you, John. Yes, I'm afraid this is um, this proposal would be yet another pustulant growth on the fair face of Shaftesbury and on the AONB. Um, it, it, it offers nothing to the town. It just takes away uh, what, what it pre pre at present is a lovely field with lovely views. Will just become a an urban wasteland. Now that's unfortunately under the current planning laws not enough really to object. However, I did do a bit of reading, and in the planning inspector's appeal decision um, of the thirteenth of December twenty nineteen, at paragraph thirty one, he mentions the fact that there was an emerging Shaftesbury neighbourhood plan which he understood has not yet reached an advanced stage of preparation. 
And until those plans are made, they do not form part of the development plan, thus limiting the weight which can be afforded to these documents in the context of this appeal. So the way I read that is that the inspector did not have our neighbourhood plan available to him and therefore was not able to use that to um, inform his decision. There is now a neighbourhood plan and I think that changes, uh, if not the whole argument, it fundamentally um, adds another dimension to it. And I would say that we should be objecting because there's quite clearly a breach of two policies, which is SFHE1, and that the plan does not meet any of the policy requirements, and breach of SFHE2, in that this proposal should only be allowed if it is to be integrated into an existing built-up area. It isn't, it's taking a greenfield site. So those two policies are quite blatantly breached. I think on that basis, uh, we should use those to frame the objection. Uh, I have no hesitation in voting against this. It's a disgraceful proposal. It will ruin that uh, the entrance into Shaftesbury. Um, we don't want it. Fine. Thank you. Now, can I just uh, recap? We get um, just a moment, Virginia, and then I'll speak. Um, can I just ask uh, Claire? Do we have an, a proposal yet? Did anybody get as far as making one? I, I took it that Councillor Hollingshead was the proposal I, to put I will forward. I propose to object. So you're, you're proposing to object, and we didn't yeah. have any prior proposals to that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Do I have a seconder? I mean, I will second it if nobody else will. Okay. Okay. So we've I got think a, that's you then, Chair. Okay, so we've got a proposer and a seconder. Um, now, before we go any further, Virginia, were you about to say something? Well, I just wanted to, um, well, obviously echo everything that's been said here, <clears throat> but um, given how it fails on so many fronts, both on national planning policy framework and on the um, neighbourhood plan, which I have to say their application doesn't reference at all. And I've spent quite a lot of time looking through all their paperwork today and um, they don't reference it in any way whatsoever and they submitted it on the 14th of May and all their supporting documents were submitted on the 6th of June which is a whole month after the, the neighbourhood plan was voted through on referendum so whilst technically it did become law till the 22nd of June nonetheless they would have known that it had been voted through um, and but they haven't even referenced it in any way um, I mean we could get into a lot of detail about the many ways in which it doesn't um, you know, meet our needs and our wants. But I just think that we need to kind of approach it as has already been discussed at a high level and just say that, you know, it, it, of, of all, all, all the things that Andy said. So, you know, there's more ammunition we could use if, if it came to it, but um, just a kind of a, a broad way, it is a completely appalling okay. scheme. And as usual with Persimmon, it doesn't do justice to this town, to its residents, to the AONAB, it, it's just awful. Thank you. Now, yes, I agree. The, the only thing I disagree is that we don't have the luxury of being able to do it a bit at a time. This is our one go at commenting. Okay, so, well, I'm, I'm very, I mean, you know, I, I would be happy to submit details about, I mean, all the materials that they've suggested, the brickwork, that it's brick with either um, red tile roof or slate, the trouble is we know the kind of brick that they use, which yeah. is as cheap as possible, virtually yeah. purple in colour and of such bad quality that it leaches salt at the earliest opportunity. So yeah. one can imagine how appalling that frontage is going to look within a very short amount of time. There's no green sand. There's very little architectural detailing. All the sills that they've noted are of constituted stone, reconstituted stone. And like all the other reconstituted stone they've used elsewhere, that is just going to grey and look grim within a matter of months, quite frankly. Um, the so, materials are awful. There is just absolutely nothing, there is absolutely nothing positive, even if you were looking for something positive to say, uh, there is just nothing positive to say about the appearance of the materials. Fine, thank you. Yeah, I, we're all in agreement with you. Um, it's a question of how we formulate what we're going to say. And um, what I'm thinking we need to do is to tick off all of the policies in the neighbourhood plan yeah. that it violates. Mm. Um, and I've got mm -hmm. quite a few written down myself. Andy's already mentioned SFHE1 and SFHE2. 
um, the we, we have a policy referring to the use of local materials, FD, SFDH7, which it, it violates. High quality design, I would say that it violates. Yeah. Um, I don't have a copy of the plan in front of me, so I can't. I can't comment. Well, I, I've got it here and I can plough through if necessary. Right. But I'm, I'm, the ones that I'd picked out already, uh, there's one referring to local character, which I think is FF, SFDH1. Uh, dark skies policy, SFGI4. Yes, that's the one. That, that's, that certainly, if there is no special allowance made, then that, that's straight away in the bin as far as we're concerned. Oh. Because it's right I mean, on the edge of the Cranbourne Chase. I, 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 think we, I think we should be approaching it exactly as has been suggested at a high level uh, and using our policy, which is now being voted through in his law, yeah. because there are so many policies that apply. I mean, also SFCL3, which is to support safe walking and cycling routes. There's no evidence of that in that plan. And, and yeah, I think we, we do need to go through the neighbourhood plan, pick out all the relevant policies, list them, and evidence where this proposal does not meet that. Yeah, I think, I think the it's, question is, how is that going to be done? Who's going to do that? Um, well, we've got a day or two, haven't we? Um, do you, we, we could, I, I don't mind putting my head together with somebody else and doing a, a telephone conversation or something while looking at the, the, the document. I, I'm quite happy to do it in cooperation with somebody else. I, I handy or Virginia. You want to, can I get you involved, Virginia? You, you yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to work on that with you, John, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do then is we will read the uh, neighbourhood plan and pick out all those policies that we consider have been violated and, and a, a, a one-line description as to why. Yeah. And, and we, we put that down as our reason to object. If, that, if, that, if the inspector wasn't aware of the neighbourhood plan or didn't, couldn't consider it because it wasn't made at that stage, then it could easily be a powerful argument. It certainly yeah. should be if there are any logic yeah. to it. And oh. if it's thrown out. Well, I, 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 I'll, I'll drop some thoughts to you guys as well um, over the next day or two on that. Okay. All right. And okay, also we've so got have we got the specific points that Bernard's made that we can you know add as an addendum. I've got the email and if we, yeah. if we um, refer to that and refer to the neighborhood plan. And, and tick off the things one by one and why they fail the test. And, and we make that our reason for uh, objecting. Hmm. So I also think okay. we should, as a committee, um, write to our local count, county councillors, uh, Tim and Derek, alerting them, them to this and insisting that they, they make sure that they are able to, well, Tim sits on planning, that this is um, properly called in and debated. And I think yes. also, yes. to be fair to Simon Hall, we ought to write to him. Yes. Um, my understanding of the recent by-election at Chesham and Amersham was, um, went the way it was because of deep unhappiness with the way planning decisions yes. were being made. Uh, so I think it's only fair to alert him of our concerns. Okay, so so our, our resolution then will be, if I can put, put it into words, Andy, because you started it off, that we object to this application on the, the grounds that it breaks almost every policy that we have in the neighbourhood plan and, and in every, every relevant policy. Every, relevant well, policy, John. All, it's almost every policy, I think. They're all relevant. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, any, okay, it, it breaks almost every re relevant policy in the neighbourhood plan and gives the examples of, of what that is. And then uh, that's mm. our observation as far as the planning authority is concerned, that we ask them uh, the, to call it into the planning committee and not be delegated, mm. and that we write formally to our two... Uh, county councillors and ask them to be vociferous in their objection to it when it does become uh, consulted on by the, uh, the local planning authority. And we okay. uh, appraise the MP of that situation as well and, and indicate that we are, could be another Amersham if they don't watch out. <laughs> does, that, does that sound okay, okay Andy? Are you okay with that? You, 
you yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Um, I, as I said, I'll, I'll drop a few words about you know my interpretation of um, the inspector's uh, appeal report uh, and his reflections on the neighbourhood plans. Because be I think I think I think the fact that there is a neighbourhood plan does now change the change the argument within the inspector's well, report. It, it certainly should. Yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. Now, who seconded that? Is that Phil? Jan. Jan, Jan, you Yeah, I'm happy to second it. Are, are you okay with the wording that we've just got there? For the yes. Rest? Yeah, okay. You know far more about planning than I do, so I have to go along with it. <laughs> in, the, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> Before you move to the vote chair, can I just okay. clarify, because yes. you are going to be taking the detail of the response in terms of reference to policies offline, um, for clarity, you've covered the points that you object on, including the, com the communication from Mr Ede, and therefore all that's going to happen, if you like, behind the scenes is the connecting to policy that you won't be introducing any further elements yeah. to it. That's right. It's purely finding those policies in the neighbourhood plan which have been violated by this application. Yeah. Okay. According to the evidence that has been presented tonight. Yeah. yeah. Is that okay, so everybody with that. Any other comments then before we vote? Okay, all those in favour of this resolution then. Okay. Thank you, unanimous. We're all there. Right, thank you all for that. Um, right, let's move on. Park, parking charging strategy. Right. Not a good item to follow a planning application like that. <laughs> I just need to go back to the agenda. Bear with me, Chair, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. I was just going to, um, uh, if I could just say a couple of words on this. Um, I'm really glad Virginia's here. Um, Virginia copied me into the response by the Chamber, and I think that the Chamber's response was extremely detailed and extremely apt and to the point. And, um, uh, I would be very, very happy as the town council to lend our weight to that and, and right. have that as a, as a joint response. Uh, my personal view is that the, uh, while I understand what Dorset Council are intending to do with their parking charges and trying to rationalise them, they've made some, um, by again adopting a uniform approach across the whole of the county, they've made some fundamental errors and they forget that Shaftesbury has got differences and is unique mm. and should be treated um, somewhat differently because of the nature of the town. Um, the fact that we, the, our, the fact of our location, we are a market town, we are a tourist town and so on and so forth. Um, and I think the, as I said, the chamber's response is detailed and covers much of that. Um, be very happy to um, use that as the basis of our uh, response as well, should people feel that the right. proposals now, from Dorset are insufficient. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, I'm not aware of that report. Can oh, I give yeah, yeah, a see. very brief resume of it? Um, yeah, so um, essentially we, we acknowledge that we understood that um, Dorset needed to have a rationalisation of parking charges across the county. But what they have um, identified is that they've split towns across the country into three mm. um, parking charge levels. Yeah. So you've got the smaller, more rural locations, you've got shopping destinations, and then you've got tourist destinations. Oh, yeah. Now, Shaftesbury has been put in level two, which is the shopping destinations. And so we've been put in a category with Blandford, Bridport, Dorchester, Sherburn, Wareham, Weymouth and Wimborne. However, in level one, which is the smaller, more rural locations, they include Gillingham, Sturminster, Ferndown, Charmouth, Beminster, Verwood, West Bexington. I've and not, I've not our key point is that, you know, we have been put in a, in a more expensive car parking charge zone than Gillingham, right. which I've has 
four supermarkets, plus an Iceland, plus pets at home, plus Mole Valley traders, which all have their own car parking facilities. And so this puts us very much at our closest town at a considerable disadvantage. And, you know, we don't need, I mean, it's bad enough that we have, you know, Sunday charging now, and we understand, I, you know, I understand they want to have a uniform policy, but, you know, it's bad enough to have Sunday trading when we are a tourist destination as well as a shopping destination and so forth. But we are not a shopping destination in the way that Gillingham is. Yeah, and I, it's interesting that I'd looked to see which uh, zone we were in, but I hadn't looked to see which zone Gillingham was in. If they could put that, I mean, don't they ha actually have more houses than we've got? They will. Yeah, do but they, they have two and a half thousand more residents than we have. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. to mention, they. I mean, I've actually checked, and they almost have as many supermarkets as Dorchester. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, you know, and not that we want to, um, you know, try and make matters worse for Gillingham. What we have said is we need to be put in the same zone as Gillingham. So yes. if Gillingham are in zone one, well, we should be in zone one because we're a small rural location. And just because yeah. people are attracted to Shaftesbury, you know, the paucity of our car parking and mm -hmm. the reality that in the town centre area, there is nothing we can do. I mean, yes, the town council is doing what it can to increase car parking charges and um, mm -hmm. to increase, sorry, car parking Places. availability. Yeah. But, um, you know, it doesn't detract from the fact that right bang in the middle of Shaftesbury, you know, we've only got Bell Street and Angel Lane. Um, and the other thing to consider, of course, is is how Bell Street has split up. You know, if we retain the two zones, now we have been in touch with Dorset Council on that point, because obviously there's the long stay section of Bell Street, there's the short stay section of Bell Street. Dorset Council have come back, Elizabeth Murray, who's who's the kind of the, the lead for the parking transformation exercise, and she has said that they're very much looking to towns to advise them because obviously towns know what their parking needs are and whether or not those zones are needed. What we don't want is for, because the thing is once the car park one and car park two adjacent to Shaftesbury Football Club have been constructed, there will be permit parking there for residents. And we don't want any more permits than we already have at Bell Street because we need it for shopping and we need the turnover for shoppers. So yeah. that is something where I could see without meaning to there could be a slight conflict of interest there and so we need to I, I think as a group as both the chamber and a town council look at exactly what we feel Bell Street needs and what the needs are um, for shoppers. What we've asked for um, I doubt we'll get it but what we have asked for is um, free half an hour parking at the beginning because that could be easily handled through the parking meters and um, would encourage the kind of turnover of local shoppers popping in and and getting things and then and then going and getting that turnover of car parking spaces and that, that that's that's what happens in Corbridge in North uh, Northumbria mm. uh, the, the first half hour is free and then after that you're paying I think pound for the first hour if but obviously with, with that second half hour is you pay the pound yeah the other thing Virginia that um, I think we should be uh, making a particular point about we've the, thanks to North Dorset selling off the cattle market site, we've just lost 140 free parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to go back to North Dorset, or go back to Dorset County and say, we are down 140 spaces. This is appalling. And there is surplus land at, next to Lidl, which should be uh, brought back by Dorset in order to provide additional car parking. Yeah, well, good, good, good point. I think, I think that's, a, okay. I, I think that's a, a, another extremely valid point, which is that if you're a town like Gillingham, um, you have room to spread to a point. Um, we, 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 we don't, we're sat on top of a hill. There isn't anywhere to go to build new car parks except up or down, and that's not going to work. Yeah, okay. Um, can I just ask a question, Virginia, whether what you make of the um, comments about on-street parking charges? The uh, well, we, we, we have clarified that. Sorry to interrupt you, John. I mean, it, that, because this parking review document has gone out to the whole of Dorset. So mm -hmm. on-street parking charges don't apply to us because we don't have any on-street parking meters. So there's no uh, intention to bring no. that in as far as you're aware? Okay. No, they're not. They're not. Uh, 
they're not starting they're not they're not uh, or i can't remember what the word it is i'm looking for but but mm. we're not going to have on street parking where there is none so right. okay so it goes back to the main arguments then that we we cannot just be treated as a, a, a generator of money, which is fairly clearly what this policy is for. Uh, they could always round down the charges rather than rounding up. They could have rounded off Sundays. They could have made Sundays free everywhere rather than Sundays paying everywhere. It's very clear. It's not a rationalization process. It's a money raising process. And the thing that rankles with me is that we probably pay the most in parking charges to what is now Dorset Council, and we get nothing back in return we got an item later on in the agenda about a broken mirror down at St. James's, which I, I wasn't aware of until I heard the email read out just now. And I mean, that's something, if that is highway property, the least they could do is fix that. And they've never got any money. They, they can gather it very well, but actually paying it back out, we're still waiting for a weight limit in St. John's Hill. To be and fair, John, they did do the uh, pavement crossing into Barton Hill, uh, which was about £5,000 worth. So just to be fair. OK, well, that, that's it's a one tick on the plus side, but there's an awful lot of ticks on the minus side, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for that. Yes. OK, so our, our response to this, um, the, it is a um, consultation, isn't it? Yeah. And our response should be that we are aware of why they want to rationalise, but we are most unhappy with two, at least two of the ways in which they're proposing to do it. One by treating us the same as, um, well, not treating us the same as Gillingham. They certainly have a lot of explaining to do there. It is remarkable the number of concessions that Gillingham seems to get over everything. Um, I've noticed that over the years I've been on the council. They seem to have a, a, a hotline to whoever makes the decisions at Dorset Council. Um, and I, I've been suspicious of that for years and years. So that's something that they need to explain, certainly why we are different in this respect to, to Gillingham. Uh, and, and I mean, what would your proposal be being practical that both Gillingham and we should be down at level one or both Gillingham and we should be in level two? What oh we... gosh, well, I, I wouldn't no, want to suggest that- one. Level yeah, one. Um, we wouldn't want to inconvenience Gillingham. I mean, I'm not, you know, this, <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not trying to score points here. You know, we just no, want to level playing field and, and we are considerably, you know, we're as rural as if, if, if Gillingham is rural, then yeah. we most certainly are. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I mean, I'm, I'm only trying. I'm looking for clarification. I'm looking for consistency. Um, and, and it's obviously up to Dorset which level they put both of us in. Hmm. Uh, but we, we won't understand if they put us in different levels. Well, I can't understand how we could be placed in the, in the same level as Dorchester for crying out loud. I mean, that's yeah. bonkers. Yeah. And, and, and higher than Gillingham when we've got more population. A smaller population. Yeah, I, th yeah. I, I think sadly that does reflect on the lack of knowledge of mm. the county. Uh, and I think it reflects on the fact that people in the southern part of the county don't really understand the, the, uh, the northern part of the county. Um, I might be making a sweeping a statement there, but to, to put Shaftesbury in the same group as Dorchester and Bridport is ridiculous. It, it's sporting, sporting or foolish, depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah. We should be in the same category as Stonemaster and Gillingham for parity and for fairness. Uh, and that's the end of the argument. It, 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 there's, there's no other yeah. reason. Yeah. Where is Sturminster then, Andy? Are they in one? It's in level one. It's, it's, along it's, with Gillingham. Same, it's with Gillingham. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so that so so yeah so we're, we're put in the same group as Sherborne and Blandford yeah yeah and Dorchester which is Dorchester yeah and, and Brid, Bridport Weymouth and Weymouth um, furthermore was it Weymouth <laughs> yeah 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 okay so that's the first comment that we want to make uh, that that we expect to be put in the same category as as Gillingham or or even lower <laughs> but not higher <laughs> yeah. OK, and the other one is that we, we you cannot you cannot just apply a blanket blanket charging policy across towns that have got specific parking problems unless you're going to solve the parking problem first and then align the charges. That, I mean, I think Phil's sorry to interrupt. But I really think that 
if, if you want to, to take the, the Chamber's statement as a starting point and endorse that, fantastic, but do add in Phil's extremely valid point about the fact that we've lost 140 car parking spaces, you know, stolen okay. from us by their predecessor. And the, the Chamber is happy for us to um, do that, to, to yep. adopt that as something that we endorse? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I would think that that seems to be the, the obvious way out by um, taking that, um, saying that we agree yeah. with everything that's been said there, plus the fact that we are already 140 odd spaces down. Uh, and and it, unless you're going to rectify that first, you can't even think about treating us the same as everybody else. So that, would that be fair comment? Makes sense. Does anybody else want to add anything to this discussion? Shan, are you not? Are you no, thank you. Okay. Right, okay, so have you got more or less the gist of that, Claire? Yes, I have, thank you. Does it need any more clarification, is it? Uh, no, I'm quite happy with that one. Um, be, because we're basing the response on the response from Chamber and then adding in those, I've written the extra three elements, so the expectation to be in the same category as Gillingham, the uh, concern about having a blanket policy uh, when there are still specific parking issues that need to be resolved first, and the uh, reference to the loss of parking from the sale of the cattle market. Yep. Okay, if everybody's happy with that, should we vote on that as the wording then? Uh, all those in favour? Okay, nice. Can I just check? I'm sorry, Chair. I might have missed it at the beginning when I was scribbling, but I didn't see propose and second. Uh, I proposed. Um, Thank you. you. Yeah, um, and I'm not quite sure who seconded, but uh, um, I, I'm happy to second it. Did, did anybody? Thank you, Chair. I'll take that. Second? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. do that job. Right, is that one wrapped up thank now? Claire, are you happy with that? Yep, happy with that, thank you. Let's move on um, to the next one, which is the application for scheduled monument consent. This is just... Okay, the... Councillor Proctor's just declared that he is a member of the Abbey Board, just for okay. transparency. Oh, right, yeah, thank well, you. I could get it to the speech to come on, the, the microphone to come on. Yeah, I'm a member of the Abbey Board. Um, I'm not personally, I have no financial interest in this. Um, I should just, if I may just clarify, but I know I shouldn't just clarify, but I'm, I'm making the point, but um, the, the lodge isn't an ancient monument. It's obviously the ruins that are the ancient monument. Right. But the lodge is um, on uh, ancient, the lodge is on an ancient monument though, isn't it? It, it might not, the building itself might not be, but it, it yeah. isn't all the ground ancient monument. The, the grounds are, but the lodge itself isn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there was some, I read somewhere about them intending to put ramps to make accessibility better. Is that going to um, in any way reduce the um, impact of the garden as a, a natural place? What, what's going okay. on that? May I, may I explain? But um, at the moment, the area between the new museum and the lodge is the gardener's dumping ground. It's um, bins, uh, ladders, uh, it's a it's an absolute mess. And it's like everybody needs in the garden. And yeah. so the idea with the lodge is that the western room, the old sitting room, is going to become a classroom for children's groups to be able to come in and ha have sessions. Yeah. And some of the children come in from uh, special needs schools. And they come in in wheelchairs. And so the idea is that the uh, we need a, a ramp just to lift it. It's only about two hundred millimeters right. from ground level up to the floor level. Uh, so they have a bit of a decking, giving level access for these children. I don't want to sound anti-disabled um, uh, improvements. I'm just thinking of the sensitivity of the area and that whether... Bit, that, <laughs> that bit's not sensitive at all. In fact, if anything, uh, this work will smarten that little bit up. Right. Um, and because of having the building, the idea is eventually to get rid of the studio and uh, make part of the south transept more clear to, it would be understood which it isn't at the moment so it's it's part of a very well organized it will uh, be an presentation yeah. okay thank you does anybody else want to add their opinions and make any comments it sounds to me very laudable and i think we should um approve it and support it anybody want to do you want a decision on this we we, we provide our recommended response 
Um, I, I'm quite happy to propose that we accept that and go along with it. That's fine. You can treat it like a planning application if you like and just return a no, uh, no objections. Yeah. Well, if I, that, I, that seems to be the way the discussion is going. I would propose that. Does anybody want to second it or say anything else? I'm happy to say I'll second. That. Okay, well, I think Jan just picked it. Doesn't Jan. matter. Yeah. <laughs> Jan, Jan seconded it. So we have a proposer and a seconder. Does anybody else want to speak to it before we actually vote? Okay, all those in favour of that proposal then, please. Right, I can see uh, three, right. And you're not voting, Phil, I'll take it. Okay, so um, three, I, I just four, thought I would abstain. One abstain. Three, four, one abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks for that. That's that one then. Um, traffic posters, Abbey School. Right. Um, we can't say no to this one. Um, we're picking up the bill, I gather. That's the only thing we've got to agree on. Anyone? Chair, would you mind if I just spoke to this one briefly? Yes, yes please do. Um, just to say that uh, under different circumstances, we would have encouraged this to come through as a grant request for the money so that they could press ahead with their project. Uh, but it came in after the grants were considered. That said, there was some funding left within the grants pot. So the difficulty being is you're not a committee that has authority to spend grants. So if you wanted to spend from grants, then it would be recommended to GEM in a fortnight's time. In fact, the recommendation on any spend would be to GEM in a fortnight's time. But beyond that, uh, it is relating to highways matters. And so I'll turn it over to you. Right. Thank you. Have you any idea how many of these posters we're looking for? Is it the one, is it just the four that are there or will there be 10 off of each? Have you, have you got, is there any indication of the scale of outlay that is expected? I only have the details that you have in the report as well. I've, I didn't deal directly with the school on this one. Um, so is it just to seeing... decide how many we're prepared to pay for effectively again? Because the, there's a request that we put up notices. There's a, a statement that it's going to be £11 a shot and no indication of whether we want 10 or 100 which will make Probably It's only one of each, isn't it? I, I'm not sure. Is it no? clear from... Have I not noticed something? I don't know. Right. OK. Virginia, do you want to say anything? Um, yes. I'm, just specifically on this, um, I would just say that given that the, the smallness of the... Um, the narrowness of the approach from, from St James's itself, that the... Um, um, although they do... I know that they do want to have posters to slow down cars as they hurtle towards the school because they see, oh my God, there's the road ahead and everybody tends to speed up, is my understanding from talking to residents in that area. That's the first thing to say. The other thing I wanted to say specifically on cost is that as the Chamber have put up so many posters over the course of the last year to support business through COVID, that um, I've actually got quite a lot of experience of organising correct posters and getting them printed up. So um, in order for them to be clearly read, so for instance, uh, on, on the junction, sort of as you exit Foyle Hill onto the bottom of the St John's Hill and just before you do a little dog leg to go on St James, mm -hmm. there is a Shaftesbury Chamber of Commerce poster there on Corrick's board saying, welcome back. We're in high time, we took it down really, because we're about to kind of um, go mm -hmm. into freedom. So, but we do have, that would be a perfect place to put one board up. Now the size of that board is A0. So it's sort of four times the size of A3. And at A3, and looking at the artwork, which is, of course, absolutely delightful and colourful, and, you know, I love it. But in order for people to actually be able to read it, I think really it needs to be at that size. Yeah. I can confirm to the committee that A0 costs £30 a board on Corex. Um, so oh. if you were to get one of each, and I can't see how you could use more than four, yeah. realistically, without overcrowding the site yeah. and it being kind of overkill, you know, um, where we put the board in terms of the approach um, to the school from St. James's, I think needs a bit of discussion because there is no obvious place to put it unless we were going to put something on the, on the corner of the Rolt Millennium Green so that cars literally had a warning before mm. they go into that narrow bit of road. 
and so that would then warn them that there is a school approaching. Um, I think all the other boards really would then be maybe, well, I think we need to think about exactly where it was. I probably, I think three instinctively, one on the corner of Rock Millennium Green, one at some point along the 3091 coming up from Stir, mm. and then one literally there where our board currently is on the Triangle of Green um, at the bottom of St John's Hill, and then they could be rotated. So all right. one could be back to back, so you could have two on, on one stand. Um, okay. But at 30 pounds each, that would be an outlay, obviously, of 120 pounds, so. And how big is A0 in terms of? Um, well, it, uh, just the boards are still up around town, so, yeah. but it, it's literally, it's, it's four lots of A3. Four lots of A3, which is eight lots of A4. So it's, yeah. it's a fairly hefty sign. Yes, I mean, I can't remember what the exact, um, let's see if I can find out, hold on a moment, let me. Um, I'm just thinking of it being a rather unwieldy, um, will Corex sort of not get um, damaged in, in that sort of size without a... a is we've been a doing it for the last year, John, so. And you're, you're happy with that size, they, zero, yeah. And they've stayed up. Yeah. So I think um, the question in terms of the size as you're coming from St. James's, so width and height, um, it's um, AO. So yes, it's, it's 84 centimetres by 1.19 centimetres, basically. It's, it's over a metre high. They're over a metre high. Yeah. So That's what's there at the moment, isn't it? So Yeah. yeah. That, that's an A0, is it? I, I yeah, I A0. So, so A1 is is the width of, a, of an AO by yeah. 60 okay. centimetres. And something that size maybe might work better. I'm just thinking that Rolt Millennium Green is a bit, you know, that's it's kind of narrower, smaller. You are still going quite slowly at that point. So maybe um, a kind of A1 size right. might be more appropriate, might go down there and do some measurements. But... Anyway, in terms of costs, the map, oh, anyway, I'll shut up now. Okay, well, thank you for that. It's a very useful, Virginia. It's ironic that my experience of traffic in Leighton Lane is that it's by far the worst at about 3.30 with mums going on the school yeah. run. <laughs> it's a death trap down there. So uh, you might want one a bit closer before you get to St. James. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can stick it on my the column of my, the front of my house because it's, it, it's scary sometimes the way people drive. Anyway, we're, what you're saying, John, is that it's actually the parents who are the yeah. most dangerous drivers. Some they of them, should know better. Some of them are, yeah. When I dislocated my hip, they had to park the ambulance in Leighton Lane, and it was about nine o'clock in the morning, and I wasn't aware of this, I was under gas and air, but apparently they had a stand-up fight virtually with a cross mother who was late taking their princess to school. And that, that's how wound up some of these mothers get. So yes, they, it's it's not all sweetness and light down at St James's, and it's everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got a more or less we're working towards a decision, which is looking like one of each of those drawings in A zero uh, to be cited, um, subject to to sort of further consideration by both the school and ourselves at each of the four approaches to the school, which is the, the, the um, Foyle Hill, um, the Sturminster Road, St. James's itself, and St. John's Hill. Is that, is that right? Andy? Hey, just a quick question. Um, are these being organised for September? Presumably, they, they would like it ASAP. Um, I mean, the schools well, are still. When, when does school break up? It breaks up in about, about the twenty week. of July. And when when's the next Gem meeting? <laughs> uh, in two weeks. So Gem will meet perhaps a day or two before schools break up. Different schools will will alter their term end by one or two days, potentially right. depending on teacher training. But effectively, okay. we can't release the funds. We can have an indication that the council will be supportive, um, so we can get them so, moving on it. But we okay, can't so then in it. that case, we can. If schools are going to break up by the time we're ready to go ahead, um, okay. then 
that then we can have these done for September. So that gives us plenty of time. Secondly, it would be useful to um, maybe with the help of the school do a bit of a consultation around there. I'm just aware a couple of times we've put signs up with all in good intents and purposes for the benefit of the town. Um, certain individuals have complained vociferously uh, because uh, whatever reasons they've got. Um, so it may be, um, may be prudent uh, just to do a bit of a consultation, just to let people know what we intend to do with the school um, so we don't get um, uh, individuals misunderstanding. Okay, but as of now, we are proceeding, I think, to agree to fund four of these signs to be put in places yet to be uh, precisely decided. Is that right? So because the committee doesn't have a budget no. that it can spend from for this, it will be a recommendation to Jem. That gives us a week, um, well, it certainly gives us the rest of this week to put together the detail of how that recommendation will go to Jem so that Jem's got all of that information that no. you are asking for today. Okay, thank you. Virginia? Oh, I just wondered um, whether we know from the school if they have already consulted parents about how they feel about these posters. Um, I don't know whether there's anything in the... There's nothing in the agenda about it. Helped, no. I can find out for you easily. Because I'm happy to go and speak to the neighbours that are immediately adjacent to where we are talking about putting signs. Um, I can do that before... The the next gen meeting so that that could be fed into the discussion if that's helpful okay yes so probably be useful thank you and the other thing that i would i think we ought to be doing in parallel is first of all um getting highways to fix this broken visibility mirror mm. and also if it's supposed to be a 20 mile an hour limit why isn't it marked as one shouldn't we be uh, applying for that? I mean, we shouldn't need to apply for it because it's the law, isn't it? No, it's, it's not standard, I don't no. think. Is it not automatic that outside no. the school there's a 20 limit? No. Is no. It not? no, okay. Should, should it say along the bottom of the posters, 20 is plenty or something like that, just as a, a bold uh, subtitle? Good idea. I don't know how it'll work. They, I'm sure they could fiddle the pictures to make them fit to still get a 20 is plenty at the bottom. The trouble is that 20 is too fast around there to, to talk of any numbers are going to make people think, oh, we can do 20. And if you do 20 past there, you'll kill somebody very quickly. 20 is lethal in that street. That, that's what most of the people driving through St. James's don't understand. They think it's a 30 mile an hour limit and they come hurtling through. It that, 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 that's the problem. It is a 30 mile an hour limit. The, yeah. the only 20 mile an hour limit in Shaftesbury is the high street. High street, there, yeah. Everywhere else is 30 miles an hour. Yeah, and I mean, <coughs> been, we're getting all sorts of applications for people or requests that we ask for a 20 mile an hour limit here, there and everywhere. And uh, I, it's about time we, we made a shopping list, I think, of all those places that we think there should be one. Because yes, but us and every other town in Dorset, I mean, because everyone feels the same way, mm -hmm. and Dorset are exhausted by people asking them for 20 mile an hour limits. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for one. It just means we have to be very Patient. tactical and, and we need to really look through what it takes to get a 20 mile an hour zone and make sure that we focus our efforts right. effectively. Yep. So any any action that we take at this stage then on the on whether the school should be protected by a 20 mile an hour limit is that is the opinion that we leave it for the time being. According to Google, the the um, speed limit outside schools is 20 miles an hour. I've just looked it up. But it's not signed as that, is it? That's that's the point. Well, there isn't a sign there, is there? He commented that I can't remember now within the last month when talking about speed limits that the, their, their sat now flagged up the fact it was 20. It is oh. because it's, it's, yes, because it's a school. It's, there's a presumption. There's a presumption. But it's not on the road or anything, is it? No, that's right. But I mean, surely it ought to be. <laughs> but as you say, John, well, the, the 20 is too fast if there are children actually coming out. And the other thing is that because the school forces parents and the guardians to park away from the school premises, it actually means that all the little children 
are walk. Uh, yeah, they may be fine outside the school, but then they go out to their cars, and because of the width of Foyle Hill, they're walking down the middle of the road. Mm. So it, it, the whole thing is is chaos, which yeah. is why the neighbour to St James's School offered to build a car park so that all these ch these schools uh, cars could be off the road and the children walk from the school grounds directly into the car park and they didn't get into the road. So this is a, a problem but um, because the planning was refused to that car park. Yeah, Jan, I think- the, the school turned down that car park anyway because they said they wouldn't have the people to man it nor would they be able to afford the upkeep of it. And I, th I, I got the impression that was Bill Walsh, wasn't it? It was Bill Walsh, yes. Trying to, to get... It was a sprat to catch a mackerel. Yeah, yeah. There, there was, there was Possibly going with... slightly off track to... yeah, here. <laughs> Possibly, <track>. yes. <laughs> okay, so coming back on track then, we are going to propose to Jem that they uh, spend £120 on four of these signs to be put up at locations where... Uh, we subsequently decide, either by consultation or whatever that they should be, and we um, approach highways to get the mirror repaired. I, I think we have to do that. If it is a highways uh, property, then we, we should be asking them to fix it and quick. Okay. Are you in, is everybody in agreement that we... we... I, sorry, I've had the hand up. Sorry. Is there any cost in um, erecting these signs? I, I would imagine the, the, that volunteers will probably do it. I don't. Oh. I don't think you'd have to get contractors to do it. Uh, is, is there any requirement for it to be highway trained people on a highway, Claire? Okay, so if you are working on the highway, you must have Chapter 8 training or be volunteering alongside somebody who is Chapter 8 trained and have all of the required high uh, safety gear. You would also need to check with highways um, or the school would need to check because I think don't, don't be confused. This is the school asking for money so that they can do this. This isn't them asking the council to do it no. so we're enabling at this point no. um so they would be wise to check with highways that any locations they're going to put it on isn't going to cause a visibility issue so they would need to get approval from highways just to carry on with the spaces that they've identified okay thank you virginia who put yours up <laughs> Well, our, you, you, you know, Chamber of Commerce volunteers. Right. We yeah. Don't have chapter eight training or anything. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid we I'm afraid we didn't know anything <laughs> yeah. about that because yeah. we are not trained to the extent and um, excellence of Claire. Right. I just. <laughs> and it's just and as a chamber is just a group of volunteer business owners. Uh, we're not really um, regulated yeah. quite as stringently as you are. Yeah. Okay. So the, the thank you. The, the the cost of erecting is not something for us to worry about. They, they, if we provide the signs, then we'll have done our bit. Okay. So do we do we we um we, you want a proposal for that? I mean, I'm quite happy to propose it. Well, I'll have I'll propose it if you like. And, okay, Jan. Well, I'll second it, whichever. Okay. I'll propose Jan is seconding. Any other comments before we leave the subject? Okay. All those in favour. And this is a recommendation to Jem. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. That was four of us. Right. One last thing. It's the time traveller project. Oh. This came to us six months ago, and presumably it's to renew the the uh, permission erect a couple of signs. I have to say that when I look at the one outside the museum, it makes it look at first sight like a gent's toilet for the visually impaired. It's a huge sign. It's disproportionate, isn't it? Am I, am I just being silly about this? It, it, it's, I mean, we're talking about probably the most historic part of Shaftesbury and they're proposing to put up a, a metre high sign. 
and it's just so that people can flash their smartphones at it and I don't know, do they conjure a hologram or do they just get it on their smartphones? I, I, I was lukewarm about the prospect of when they first floated it, I have to say. We've got a beautiful town that is best observed by your eyes, mm. not your wretched camera. So I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm left cold by that one for the museum. I can just about live with the one at the front, which is um, the same style, but a bit smaller. But I'm... I, I don't over enthuse, I have to say. What are other people's views? Anybody else want to comment? Um, my understanding is it's only temporary. Uh, and that if we feel that they're really too much, we've got the opportunity to say no, not after the first six months or something. Is that right, Claire? Right. Is it a yes. it, it, it's still a trial, effectively? Well, it was in the first instance. Yeah. I, I you can know. change it. Well, what are other people's views before we go any further? I mean, I told you mine. <laughs> I'm not biased or anything. John, I think the, um, the, the proposal that's come to us is suggesting a smaller sign anyway. The one outside is, um, uh, I think it's the 900 mil one, and they're proposing a smaller one, 600 mil. Yes, that's, the, 300 mil. that's the one at the front, isn't it? The one on the finger post. Yeah. I think the one at the back is, is a metre, a metre high. Right. And I don't see the point of it being so large. Uh, well, I just think, I think I mean, that, that's a quite, we can have that discussion with them. And as a matter of principle, I think we should encourage it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, it is the AONB doing it, not sort of, you know, not um, an organisation doesn't really quite right. understand. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, uh, um, I speak sort of, you know, generation didn't have mobile phones when you were younger, but I think so many people use their mobile phones for so many things um, that uh, it, it, is the, it is a way of, of life uh, uh, and it's a way of doing things that, um, which is different to us. So, so I think we need to cater for that. I'm not suggesting we don't cater for it. I'm questioning whether the sign needs to be a metre high. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm, I personally don't think it should. I, it, what's wrong with having it the same size as the one out the front that's 600 millimetres high? It, it, would, it wouldn't hit you in the face so much. Yeah, well, we could, I'm sure we could have that conversation. Virginia, yeah, let's... let's um, yeah, okay. well, looking at this photograph, I mean, it's very small, but... It's just very busy, isn't it? Because the the, the mock-up here of, of the um, of the sign is right next to the um, is that called the finger post or whatever that kind of map thing is that was erected some years ago, and yeah. then there are two A boards either side of it. Yeah. I mean, already that just looks like a bit of a mess, and I'm just wondering if if it's deemed the right thing to do to give it a go and see how we all feel about it. Is that the only and the best place to put it? And, and if it is, could we not, could we just kind of make a request that there aren't any A boards between, I mean, it's very difficult to judge the space between that lamppost and the, what is that thing called? What somebody yeah. must know. It's the Mary Portus map. Oh, lovely. Well done, Mary. So the Mary Portus map, but it looks from there, you'd literally, you might bash yourself trying to squeeze between the two. I mean, it could just be because this is a mock-up and actually, there is a bit of distance, but I think my main concern, I, I, I'm not very keen on the look of it, but I get that people love this kind of thing. It just looks like a bit of a mess to me. Mm. You've just got to make sure that we don't clutter up the high street yeah. and put well, people off and they can't actually see it because there's so much to look at. It's my personal opinion that there are too many A boards in Shaftesbury. I don't know what the Chamber's view on that is, but I have to say that you see the damn things everywhere for shops that are 200 yards up a, a side street and that. I, well, that's that. But uh, well, as a chamber, I would support that because yeah, obviously, yeah. You, if you're 200 yards up a side street, you want people yeah. to know you're there. Yeah. So it's business. I'm only expressing an opinion. <laughs> Fair enough. You did comment on what I thought, though. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I put in a plea for little people being short, um, but in children are going to walk along and crack their eye or their head on the pointy bit at the bottom of that sign. I think it's totally unacceptable. 
Can um, we see the picture, please, Claire? Yeah, hold on. I shall just share the screen. Hold on. It's at the bottom of the report, Jan. You've not. Yeah. You've not very, very last. Page. Well, I haven't got. I don't know how to open that on the screen. No, that's fine. Just do, yeah. give me one moment to get to the right place, and I will zoom in for you. It will be slightly grainy because of the item that I'm using to show it, but just. Right. OK. Um, do we know what material it's made of? Is this Corex or is this something more rigid and sharp and cutty? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, if it's only Corex, you can't do any harm on it, but it, it'll, I, I would imagine it, it'll, the wind will blow it round and break I th off. I think, think Corex would still, you know, particularly, I mean, I, Phil makes a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fine. If you've got all those A boards underneath, you can't walk through the gap anyway. I mean, yeah. John, John's quite right. It's all looking a bit of a mess there. It is messy. And the other thing that is, is about to happen is, of course, the phone box is going and the water fountain's going there. I mean, should it be somewhere on the railings down the side of the town hall where it could be, uh, it could be accessed from Gold Hill um, and you see it as you walk down the steps, but not uh, when you're standing up at the top? Just a thought. Well, good, good thought. I mean, I do think it needs a different location, personally. It would be better, certainly, on a flat against a wall rather than sticking mm. out as an obstacle to walk into. I, I agree. It's, it's an excellent waiting to happen. I mean, you, you could, if those A-boards weren't there, you could walk into it edgeways on and not even see it. Mm. Uh, and, and so it, it, it's... <laughs> I, I've got every sympathy with the AONB. Um, they're, they're fighting the same battle as we are to try to preserve the... Uh, heritage of this area, but I feel we're, we're at each other's throats a bit over this one. I, I'm not comfortable with either of them. I'm certainly not comfortable with the size of the one at the back, but at least the one at the back is fixed on the wall and is flat. So it's not actually a, a, a danger to, to the public walking past. I, I do agree that the one at the front is potentially uh, dangerous and and does certainly with all the other paraphernalia clutter the place up we could maybe uh, propose a, an alternative site uh, for that for the top one and and a scaled down version for the bottom one I, I i wouldn't object to displaying them but i'm not comfortable with the scale of them john can i just check with claire on something yeah. the recommendation yeah. says that that we resolve to grant permission to install a double-sided banner and the, and the paper talks about banner and also talks about signs so is the banner a in my understanding a banner is something made out of fabric or is it actually a double-sided board of some sort it, well I mean if, it, if you take it literally it's adjacent to the picture that shows something that sticks out as a as though it was a rectangle of plywood or plastic or whatever yeah, it certainly, it's not a banner in the sense well, of well, flexible. I shouldn't think. Claire, I, so I haven't been speaking with AOMB directly. This report has come from Bree. My understanding is that it is corex or similar; that it's a more rigid structure in order to be able to fix it to the lamp post, right. and that the 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 use of the word banner is more indicative of its shape, and that it sits proud of the lamp post or the the finger post can, can i propose that we we um that we support the recommendation with the caveat that they go they they rework the design to meet the needs of the so so that we don't have a, uh too much clutter outside the town hall and, and because I, don't, I think the principle will be supported we're just not too keen on design yep yeah, yep yeah. Um, can I get clarity on this one? I apologise. Yep. Is it because is it the overall size, or is it um, that if that was going there, we would be saying no to the A boards around it? That would be I, think, I think the question. 
the, the A boards are a separate issue, aren't they? If we if we don't like the clutter, then we have to tackle the A boards as a separate issue. We, we're determining whether we would give permission for the, this banner. And as far as I understand it, it's talked about double sided, but I assume it's the same pattern on both sides. So that if it was, I mean, that's maybe the first thing to clarify, is there information on the back that you wouldn't see if it was fixed to a flat wall? Because I would prefer to see it fixed to a wall where it can't do any harm. Those pictures walkers are coming from both ways. Can I offer another solution? And it may be that this isn't something that you want to do, but would it be worth those that are particularly either worried or, or interested in in the border sense in this item that the that we delegate to uh, to myself and, and Bree with in consultation with you and we actually have a sit down with AOMB and try and get to the bottom because I remember this happening last time it was in front of the committee that there were quite a, a lot of lengthy discussions about not liking that particular size or that colour or that location. And it meant bouncing it back to the committee each time. And it might be better actually sitting around a table now that we can yeah. to try and get to the final result. Yeah. I think that's really sensible um, because also we ought to bear in mind how it fits. I know it's the Cranbourne AONB's proposal, but we also have a, a tourist strategy now with our own um, logo and marketing thing. So there ought to be some sort of harmonisation around there somehow, it would make sense. But I, I think if we could have a, a f more fully worked up visual, um, because you're quite right, Claire, I remember this coming here last time and, and it seemed to be a never ending discussion. Um, uh, so we kicked it down the road on the basis of the fact give it a try for six months to see what it looks like um and i i was back at the moment of truth again <clears throat> i i think having a discussion with the uh, people from the aonb would be a good start um and, and I, whether it actually has to be a discussion rather than just a clarification of a is that sign at the top there double-sided with two images the same or is there anything different on the back would it, would it do any harm by mounting it flat against the wall? That's the first question I would like to ask. And then, as this is how I would approach it, and that then I would say, does it have to be that big? Does it have to be where it is? Can we find a wall halfway down where fold is, where the signs that we were just passing earlier on, giving planning permission for those very tasteful dark green signs, somewhere down there where, if you know, where Gold Hill is, and that's a, a recurring question that uh, seems to be escape half the people that come here. But if you do know where it is, you will pass that sign on the way down. You will see the one by the museum. The one by the museum doesn't have to be a meter high to do its job. It's just essentially, can we minimize what we're putting up to minimize the impact, but without neutralizing the, the, the object of it? That, that, that's where I'm coming from. Now, it's, it's, yes, I'm quite happy to have a discussion or for Claire to have a discussion on our behalf. I'm, I'm just looking for something. We should support them. There's no two ways yeah. about it. Um, th there's absolutely no question about that. But we can't just say, yeah, stick a, a, a metre high sign up if that's what you want to do without any consideration for the, the effect it has on the surroundings. John. Um, Still, sorry, yes. Just uh, beside the telephone box, Yep. There is a, an explanatory board put yep. up. I think the Civic Society paid for them. Um, it, to be honest, it needs revarnishing and a bit of, bit of TLC to clean it up. Right. Um, could this sign be fitted above and behind that board in some way, possibly? Uh, that's where the water refill point is going. Yeah, but th this board is only going to be an inch thick, isn't it? So it, it, the only thing is it might hide the water refill point. I take that point. But yeah. the other possibility is, is on the railings uh, to the right of that, the stop you falling off the edge down to Gold Hill, could be fixed between the bars of the railings to get a sign or something there. Then it, you wouldn't walk into it, and it would be at eye level when you, as you walk down the hill. Yeah, that, that could be a very good place for it. We, we need more discussion about precisely where is the is going to be effective without being intrusive. Okay, so do, do we resolve that then, that we delegate to Claire uh, together with 
I, I don't mind being involved in this uh, to, to see if we can find a compromise that we can take forward. So I, I have the, the, the members uh, collectively have respectively said that they want to support in principle. So it looks like in general terms, we're looking to go ahead with this. It's just pinning down exactly how uh, and exactly where. Yeah. So if, if you're happy to delegate that to me in mm -hmm. consultation with any of, of you, either name specifically or just, I'll get in touch with all of you afterwards uh, and those that pick up to respond and those that don't, that's fine. You're not wanting to take the discussion further. Circulate it to all on P&H when, yep. when you do it. Yes, yeah, I'd be happy with that. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. Do you want a resolution to that effect? Um, yeah, yes, because we're following that format. Thank you. Well, I'll propose it. I'll propose that that's the way. Thank you. I'll second it. Okay, Jeanne will second. Thank you. Any other comments then? We, we will said. All those in favour of that proposal then? Brilliant. Four, four nil. Thank you. Thank Good. you. Okay. Is everybody happy with uh, our achievements tonight? <laughs> Thank you, John, for sharing. <laughs> 55. Uh, the sound is going very boingy. I thought we've got too much. Yeah. 